A little production can be led by little people. Big productions require big people, big in their nature, in their will and knowledge. We miss these people and we will have to wait until we grow our young men to be such. Thomas Batya. Odborné školstvo za posledných 20-30 rokov členských krajín a Technical schools in the European Union have been sorely lacking for the last 20 to 30 years. Slovakia is one of the countries of the European Union where you can see this in all of its consequences. Vidieť v celej náhote v plnom rozsahu the situation in the Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, France, or England is similar. Today in England, there is even a shortage of teachers as a result of this problem. Dnes mladá generácia, a my sme im to umožnili systémom školstva, skôr preferuje také odbory, kde to majú jednoduchšie zistenia. They do not think about their futures. Only a few of them can be employed without needing further qualifications and practical training. We felt this for a long time, not just recently. This has led us, in 2003, to repurchase a former training facility of the steelworks, which was turned into government-operated school and used to build upon traditional craftsmanship of the region, to connect practical training with our enterprise. The European Commission and the Parliament have made important reforms in the automobile industry. The CARS 2020 program and in the metallurgy industry, action plan for metal. Discussions with the largest employers and exporters and representatives of these enterprises within the European Union have unambiguously shown that preserving the competitiveness of European industries according to the plan of the European Commission for which more than 300 billion euro is appointed will be impossible without European reforms in vocational schooling for middle schools and universities. Podbrezova Steelworks is a major employer in Slovakia and the biggest employer in the region. We've implemented a dual schooling system, much talked about today, ever since taking over the school in 2003. As a first step, we've implemented the possibility afforded to us by the Education Board to adopt our education programs to a certain extent according to our needs. The second step is bridging theoretical tuition with practical application. We seek students based on educational directives from the Podbrezova Steelworks. The directives tell us which professions are needed. Namely, they are furnace operators, machinery and equipment mechanics, and electrical engineers. These are the areas of study. They also seek metal workers for teaching.
I was informed by my school counselor during an open day. I got to see how the school works, how they teach here, and what's being taught. If vocational schools are not administered by the European Union in a principled and rigorous way, conditions for young people to understand that they need an education will allow them to be employed in the future will not exist. The European Union will experience difficulties. These problems can easily lead young people unable to secure jobs to turn to those unwilling to work, to those who will go to the streets and strike, or will destroy cars or property of others. Every student that participates in our educational process has a guaranteed future job at the Ironworks, based, of course, on the course which he or she has chosen. During those three or four years, depending on the course, we teach students in a practical way, directly at workplaces in the factory. We strive to place students at workplaces where they will work in the future, especially towards the end of their education. Then the process of adaptation is almost seamless. Practical dual education means continual collaboration with Podbrezova Ironworks, preparation of workplaces, monitoring of educational development, and its analysis of effectiveness after every stage. It is important that all the workplaces are suitable for educational purposes, so that students have lockers and rooms suitable for education where theoretical schooling can be combined with practical application. Workplaces for education are chosen carefully, taking into consideration the courses and students' age. Students familiarize themselves with the workplace, develop work habits, practice manual skills, broaden their expertise, and adapt to staff members. Furthermore, they get accustomed to the operation and proper setup of smelting machinery, as well as cooling procedures, maintenance and handling. If the European Union does not concern itself with these issues, all the money invested into keeping the European industry competitive will go to waste. If the European industry will not remain competitive with Asia, China, or even the United States, living standards in the European Union will be dramatically reduced. The chief responsibility lies with the European Commission because the money being divided between member states needs to be used in a meaningful way. If practical schooling is to be perfect, students need suitable work and safety tools. They need the same equipment as the employees and, of course, they need to be motivated as well. That's why we offer several scholarships based on performance or merit. On the other hand, we also need to motivate our employees working with the students. Over 300 of our employees work as instructors, which means that students sometimes have three or four teachers which get exchanged as per our shifts. A good instructor guarantees good practical skills and a trouble-free placement of the students into the workplace. The internal guidelines for choosing instructors are rigorous. Their work is evaluated periodically. Excellent conditions for practical teaching at Podbrezova Ironworks is not enough. We still need skilled instructors. 
They have to be experts in their field so that they can transfer their knowledge to students and motivate them. There are 12 of us students in our workshop. We were guided by the vocational teaching supervisor who taught us the basics of manual metal processing. We manufactured various products. In the factory, we were instructed as part of the manufacturing process itself. For us, it's important that they acquire good working habits and get to know the workplace with the singular goal of seamlessly entering the workforce after graduating. It's good for the graduate, for his stress-free entry into the workplace, and for the employer also. That's the greatest benefit of dual schooling, as opposed to ordinary schools. After graduation, our students have a guaranteed position. They get to work at a workplace which is familiar to them from their teaching and practical preparation. They are well prepared and don't require training. They can take up work immediately at their respective workplaces. Ordinary schools have their processes and standards that need to be attained. We do a lot more. We do things government has not thought of as the financial support for each student covers only about half of our real costs with the schooling process. Sometimes it is even less. We've never looked at it as a comparison of our costs and the cost we would need to invest into graduates from other schools. Maybe the cost would be less, but here we have a chance to shape the whole process starting from year one. And the investment pays off, even if the students go on to universities. If they choose technical schools, we are glad. We offer scholarships and they can come back to us. As a first step, I'll start working at the company, at the same position where I was trained and join the other employees. I need to save up to become independent and then we'll see what's next. I would choose this school again. I have a guarantee of work, which is not the case for other schools. Today, we need experts in every single member state. And that's without taking the negative demographic developments in Western Europe into consideration. For example, Germany relies and makes use of Turkish immigrants. It's been said that these immigrants have, in those 30 to 40 years, being second, even third generation, accepted the German philosophy, the German way of life, and they are no longer Turkish in the traditional sense. Vocational schools will not be saved by startups or similar projects for middle and small employers. Schools are a national matter with the government responsible. To a great extent, the European Commission is also responsible for schools within the European Union. I work with young people from the whole of Slovakia, but within our region there's a greater chance of helping to stabilize them and make them stay. 
We are also proud of having families of multiple generations working for us. Often, the young work together with their fathers or grandfathers. We never forget the ironmongers of old. That's another pillar of our philosophy, a local patriotism of a sort which we cultivate and consider necessary. Starting April 1st, new dual education legislation entered into effect. Lots of what we've been doing here for the past 11 years has been included, as well as insights from apprenticeships which used to work in the past. The legislation is not perfect. We're aware of its flaws, and we want to suggest reforms and improvements for the future, so that employers are much more motivated to implement these processes than ever before. It's the only way. The young won't be able to prepare very well otherwise. The need for a technically skilled young workforce, which we feel today, will be felt even more. A time may come in the future when we might need to implement more drastic measures to fill our needs. We would be very glad if the European Commission engaged experts to discuss these issues. It is necessary for the European Commission to rapidly implement measures for persuading member states that for education of young people and their preparation for life, high quality schools need to be given a maximum amount of attention. It is the only way for the European Union, for the whole of Europe, to keep a high standard of living and to retain the competitiveness of its industry.